Okay, students. I like to welcome Chef Jonathan Gushu. He's scary. I find it a bit boring. The bar's a lot higher today. You need to open your mind. It's go big or go home today. In this menu, what was Ben? You know, I don't actually think I'm better than other people. This isn't bistro food anymore. It's fine. This sauce is non-existent. It's got to be beautiful. From what I see, you have no idea what you're about to do. This is your time to shine. You're gonna be just fine. It's your time and I Look how far you come. your time tonight it turned out all right you don't have to fight and I look how far you come open your eyes look how far you come open your eyes previously on chef school my name is Ben from the beginning Ben has seen himself right away as student class nice. president I've always been very good at manipulating people he's gonna be a good job I'm so sorry dude I've locked your keys in the car and like the car's running and Joyce I don't see a huge amount of confidence <sighs> what a funny girl huh? make sure you brush those off there's a lot of mud on that shit I don't understand Dave shut up he's crazy that was retarded I don't even know if Dave finished high school I want to kill them all Dave Lingard, Jesus. I think Dave just has a shitty outlook. Some people think highly of me, some people think very poorly of me. Most are probably the latter, assholes. You never actually ever see Dave enjoying food. You need an education in your field, and this is my field, so here I am. I think Dave could fail. I gotta finish. I don't want to end up working at, like, McDonald's when I'm 40. Like, he's so closed up all the time. You don't know why he's mad or, or why he's happy ever. My mom moved out when I was 16. And then I moved out. And I was like, to hell with school, to hell with, you know, family, to hell with everything. He's just sort of a loose cannon. I've been washing dishes since I was 12, and I've got a job as a line cook. So I cooked. Good morning, students. It's panel day today. I'd like to welcome to your second panel day. The bar's a lot higher today. This is a huge panel. The prize is to go to New York to the James Beard House. This is a trip to New York. I've never been to New York. It's an honor to be invited to the James Beard House. Wow. Pretty cool. They get to rub shoulders with most of the who's who of American gastronomy. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Today we're doing dishes from Michelin starred restaurants. It's awesome. This isn't bistro food anymore. This is fine dining. So today we've chosen three students to be in charge. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting one. The student chefs today are Ben. Ben is a winner and loves winning. I definitely don't want to lose. Joyce? People probably don't have any respect for me right now. Winning a panel sometimes depends on being really aggressive. Because they don't know me. Joyce just isn't part of that culture. And David? I, I don't care what other people think. I feel like Dave has something to prove. I have nothing to prove to anyone. Okay, students, Chef Jonathan Gushu from Langdon Hall. I think he's hot. Hello, Jonathan. Hi, Chef. I was actually expecting somebody older. He's certainly interesting to look at. He's pretty cute. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. I look forward to seeing uh, and meeting the, the future of cooking in Canada. We have a, a, a bigger prize than, than usual today. At this point, networking, getting stages is one of the most important things we could do. Going to the James Beard House and working in New York City. That's a lot of opportunity. After school's done, you need to have people to reach out to and places to work. It is an amazing prize. I want this bad. But I just want, I want them to know that I can cook and I want my team to feel like we've done an amazing job. So we have asked you to create three menus. Joyce, would you explain your menu for us? It's gonna be really good. My first course is a duck consomme, followed by an Asian braised pork, which is Gordon Ramsay. Joyce put so much effort into choosing her dishes. I need to get the seasoning right like right off the bat. I think she probably told me a thousand times what they were. Because seasoning later sucks. These mangoes suck so much. And my dessert is tea sorbets. Good, okay. And David? I just picked my favorite appetizer to start off, Thomas Keller's peas and carrots. It's a lobster stuffed crepe on a carrot emulsion with pea shoot salad. 
Nobody expects Dave to win. This was one tough pig. The second course, I actually have the same dish as Joyce. She copied me, I swear. In fact, if Dave comes even a strong second, it'll look good for Dave. Instead of the pork belly, I got some pork jowls. And to finish it off, toasted almond panna cotta. It's rich dish after rich dish after rich dish. And Ben, what's your menu today then? I've actually decided to go with my original lab menu. I've actually chosen to do three of the five dishes from the Nobu menu that we did for my lab. I think it's the most impressive. He's using training wheels. I'm starting out with octopus with anticucho sauce. He's following something he's already done a bunch of times. Ben always does that. The next course is the hanger steak with king oyster mushrooms. Nice, OK. And everyone's going to automatically be like, oh, clearly Ben's going to win. I do not agree with that one. Dessert is ice cream canals. His attitude, I think, is, come on, I'm Ben. I'm supposed to win this contest. It's like feeding him. He has to win. Everyone knows I'm going to win this contest, so let's let's just skip the judging altogether. So, teams, what we're going to do now is draw the names for your groups out of a hat. Uh, yeah, that's always a fun thing to do. <laughs> it's like playground style. It's like who's going to get stuck with fuck ass and what's his face? Starting with Ben. Thankfully, this time I can't be with Dave, but I can still pick Alex. Obviously, I don't want to get stuck with Alex and Andrew. And the first name is? Give me anyone else. First winner is Andrew. Andrew Corstein. Yes. Fuck me. And Rocket Richard. Richard. I don't have Alex, thank God. Excellent. David, no looking. <sighs> I mean, the one time it's chance, right? <laughs> the one time. Alex again. Again, 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 always Alex, Alex, Alex. It's like they're destined to be together. It's a good thing, too, because we have to prove that we can't work together for the sake of ourselves and just, you know, the world. I'm not gonna have a hope in hell. Tim. Oh, crap. So team two is Alex, Tim, and David, then. That meant that Kelsey was mine. All mine. My girlfriend, Kelsey. <laughs> and Matt. Who's not here? Well, I mean, I kind of called and said that I was going to be a little late. You had like some <clears throat> hippie do to attend. That's okay. The bottom line here is that Matt isn't reliable unless it's beneficial for him. You know, he may not even show up at all. Poor Joyce. Poor Joyce. She'll get over it. It's not that big a deal. Okay, students, let's get started. Oh, nope, no, don't cross hatch it. Where's the prize? I'm working with Alex again. Every time a guest staff walks through the door, you have to make the best impression you can. Ben's already in New York. Nice, Mr. Yeah. Impressing visiting chefs is really important. OK, so you've got the Darjeeling. Yep. They can get you that job. They can get you that stage. And even if you don't want to work for them, I mean, if they like you, they can suggest you elsewhere. Hey, Ben, I heard there's a lot of good shows on Broadway right now. Or, you know, give you other opportunities. You need exposure. New York. New York. Okay. And this is the brilliant way to do it. I think Ben, he exudes a, an air of kind of superiority over everyone else. Can you pass me another spoon, please? He does seem to think uh, spoon right behind you. he's better than the others. The people that are going to be judging my food, I respect them a lot. And I want them to be able to respect me a little bit, too. Like, I feel like last panel, Kelsey grabbed them. Like, I want to grab them, too. Joyce? Joyce, I'm, I'm most excited for, I think, in her menu. From what I see so far, it's good balance. Even if I don't win, I want to communicate, like, why I'm feeding them these things. She's got an appreciation for, she's thinking of people eating it. I need to. How are you guys doing? Uh, OK, sure. You're not bad? You're getting there? How is, um, so there's only, where's, you're missing a member of your team? Yes, chef. Matt was out in Guelph doing some slow food thing. Uh, anyway. Now, is this Matt guy coming? Um, you know, we're counting on him not being here. I don't know, I could see Joyce being a little frustrated with it. If he's here, awesome. If he's not, then that's okay, fine, so too. Sorry. There's a lot up for grabs to win. Is that going to affect your timeline? It will. But if Matt wants to go to the local organic... It will. ...hippie farmer's market, uh, and that means he's going to miss part of your panel... Make sure but... you should adjust that now. ...then that's what Matt does. Now's the time when you can you can change something. And right. Now's when you can make a difference. Right. At the end, you can't. Right. Okay? Chef. Thank you, Chef. I'm going to win today. You know, my, my heart and soul's going into this food. I've put a lot of thought into it. If you can get me two nice whole claws, that would be swell. I've done a lot of the work for myself already, because, well, 
claws are cool. But I'm kind of worried about getting my peas and carrots today. The recipe is just pea shoots, isn't it? Yes. Because I don't have my peas. So you can't get pea shoots? Apparently not. If I had a car, I'd go get them right now. They're grown five minutes outside of town organically in a greenhouse right now. But I don't. I don't drive. I can't go get them. You know, I, I'm screwed. So what are you going to do? I don't really know yet. That just ruins it. Don't mention peas or anything. It changes. Go look in the fridge. See what you have. They got me, they got me some sunflower sprouts. Have you tried them yet? I, I didn't like the looks of them. What would they taste like? Uh, I didn't want to taste them. They look pretty gross. We should try so what do you... But so, I mean, that's, that should be something you should really be looking moving forward to. I mean, you have, you, from what I see, you have no idea what you're about to do. Uh, Doesn't that kind of frighten you? No, I, I, I feel that I have things under control. I don't care what anybody else says. My food kicks ass and, you know, I, I have faith in my food. Jesus Christ. Alex, keep this area tidy. Right now, I, I feel badly for Joyce. What do you want me to do? Shred dust? Yes, and please keep the skin intact. When you don't know if Matt's going to show up, Joyce just has to pretend he's not going to be here and plan from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, Jesus, come. Matt has an incredible way of, of never making it seem like he's actually crossing anyone. OK, fine. OK. He's coming. I was baking bread for the Wolf Organic uh, Food Conference. I met a lot of cool people, had a lot of fun. I mean, he doesn't ever cross anyone. Apparently, I should open my own bakery. I probably could have sold out 500 loaves of bread. But he will leave people by the wayside. You knew you had to be here two hours ago, right? Uh, yeah, but they knew that I had uh, other stuff. Everyone's wondering where you are. And actually, Joyce, Joyce thinks you're not even coming. I mean, I guess I should have been on time. Oh, really? Well, I called her so she knows I'm here. But at the same time, so what do I care? I'm here. Right. It's not about that. It's about me. Not feeling very good. My big issue, I think, is my lack of confidence. I'm pretty nervous right now. Like, I don't feel good. That's my handicap. So what, what's your drama? She needs some confidence. This is duck skin. It looks burnt. She isn't willing to just take that really confident, strong role. I just don't think I have time to redo it. The same way that okay. some of the, the boys in the class do. Tim, can you grab me a paper towel, please? Okay. I think I have uh, more than enough crepes for uh, two portions of peas and carrots. My interaction with Dave over the crepes is just silly. So why are you making so many? Because some will be garbage. Well, that one's garbage. It has a hole in it. Yep. Sure is. Chef Guju is right. We were making a lot of crepes, but we had a lot of lobster to wrap in them. So uh, why not? You do your thing or whatever, but you're the, you're in charge here. I mean, you don't want to be working as much. You want to be watching these guys. I ah, fuck my team. And if all you need is two crepes, why don't you make three and be done with it? I'm still going to win today. I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to New York. So our first student chef is Ben. Here we have grilled uh, octopus with anti couture sauce. You know, I don't actually think I'm better than other people. But throughout these last two years, Duffy, Richard, myself, obviously, we've always sort of come out on top. And after a while, you get used to that. I'm not sure if, if the sauces are, if one's canceling out the other, or they're just too similar. I think it's too spicy. They're being pretty hard on Ben's food. I am screwed. This octopus just goes to mush in your mouth. So here we have a beef omelet or hanger steak. Let's be honest, I went into it thinking that no problem, I got this. First of all, the hanger steak, you've, you've cut it too thick. The beans and the mushrooms are perfect, but this sauce is non-existent. And on the other hand, your salsa is so overpowering, it's taking over the entire dish. Let's be honest, if Matt Duffy and Richard had been the other two chefs, I would have worked my ass off. And here we have amaretto ice cream with uh, <laughs> what I call fake lead cheese and a yuzu soup sprinkled over top. Ben, I actually, I really like this. I think this, uh, this is an, an excellent dish. Thank you. But just one, one thing that's just kind of been, I've, I've been thinking about is that didn't this whole menu come from a lab, from a Nobu lab? It came from a lab, yeah. So what was, in, in this menu, what was Ben? I what? really like the flavor of horseradish with beef. So I tried to somehow incorporate that into a shoe. And did you? I tried I to, to bring it to the forward. Really? No, I couldn't taste. Like okay. I said, with that shoe, I couldn't taste the thing. 
Okay. So you're good to go. Already. I think Joyce is definitely the contender in this competition. <laughs> okay, if you say so. <laughs> I think I'll beat Joyce here. It's fine. I'd love to see her win. Uh, we're starting off with the duck consomme with duck confit ravioli. But I know she can. She's so good. Joyce, that's a, um, I think that's that's a lovely dish. I was just like, what? I think the consomme is excellent. It's good color. Like, I couldn't believe it. As a chef, like, she's come so far. The seasoning's perfect. It's a great dish. I really, really like this a lot. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Okay. Joyce takes things very seriously. Whatever. I'm gonna leave that. She takes things to heart. So this is my Asian braised pork with potato puree. I think food's like very like you can think about food all day long. Joyce's dish is it's it's very sound, mm -hmm. but it's I find it a bit boring. That hurt. Your jus is very nice. And it's a solid jus, and you've got a solid mash there. But it's all you really there's not a big differentiation in the entire dish. How did I not see this? With your first soup, you had browns in it. Your second course, you had browns in it. It's like everything's brown. Shorter menus, you have to be very careful of repeating flavors, colors, textures. Okay. I can't see her giving up. Yeah. Okay. And then there's a little bowl of bread. Joyce will be one of those people that either she, she'll just decide it's not for her. So these are tea sorbets, green tea, pear and darjeeling, and this one's chamomile. Um, and this is a Szechuan pepper and ginger twill. Or she's going to go for it with such full force that she will become a household name. These sorbets are all, I think they're all excellent. The yep. Pirin Darjeeling is, is absolutely amazing. And this twill is, is, is perfect. Am I going to lose this competition? I love it. I think I have a good shot at winning, actually. I think these are, these are awesome. But there's still Dave to contend with. This is a lobster stuffed crepe with a carrot emulsion, a little bit of carrot powder there. And it's actually a, a sunflower sprout salad. One thing I have to give Dave credit for is, despite the number of times that he's been beaten down and yelled at and failed, you know what, he's still confident, he still thinks he's going to win. It's all or nothing with me. It's go big or go home today. It's gotta be beautiful. I really enjoyed it. I think it was, um, it was, it was perfectly balanced. The crepes were excellent, the filling, the filling is spot on. Perfect. Thank you, chef. I didn't really think of Dave as a contender until he played it as main. That's when I was like, oh, shit. This is a little interpretation of Gordon Ramsay's Asian braised pork. The sauce is just the braising liquid from the pork jowls that I use instead of the pork belly. I felt like I really had like a solid chance against Dave. Wow, I, I was impressed by Dave today. And slowly, like, those chances were just dissolving into nothing. David, it was very well cooked. The flavor's great. We're just sort of standing in pause, waiting to see how this develops. That beautiful braised braised pork is excellent. Thank you, Chef. Is the universe going to be sent out of alignment if Dave wins? What's going to happen here? So this is a toasted almond panna cotta with Saba. And Saba is what, please, David? Saba is Trebbiano grape must just before it becomes balsamic vinegar. I think Dave has a good reason to be proud of himself if he wins today. It's a very sound dish, nice dish. Let's be honest, it's not gonna change how he acts. It's just gonna make him brag more. Then we're gonna have to listen to him fucking talk about how great he is. David, uh, with regards to your menu, it was a good, well-balanced menu. I think you executed it well, but really, I think your attitude needs a lot of work. It's hard to comment on that one. Um... The biggest thing that I can say now is you need to open your mind. I was like, Oh my God. As though John has worked with us for the past six months. Once he tells Dave about his attitude problem, like, I think I've won. <laughs> I think the only thing stopping you is you.
we'll see if there really is anything standing between me and success. This was a very hard decision, and unfortunately there only can be one winner. Come on, just tell me. Let's get this over with. But today's winner is David. <sighs> this was a massive lesson in humility. You too, Davey. Something I've forgotten about, I think, in the last little while. I see the mistakes I've made now. Bye, guys. Bye. And they're sad, like, amateurish mistakes. It's kind of upsetting. Next time on Chef School. Students, today is what we call your ethnic black box exam. Cooking is all about confidence. You're going to have five minutes to think about what you're going to make. I'm not a person that's just going to fucking throw shit in a pan. My confidence just took a bit of a hit. Like a fucking monkey. OK, ginger juice in the eye. I don't know what he's looking for. I don't want to fuck it up. This is Sri Lankan green curry, rice and peas, kalaloo. Green mango with lime jaggery gastric. Where's the bread? There has to be reason, and there has to be purpose of why I'm doing these things. I want him to see me and my food. It doesn't work. And I don't know if he will.